So we'll get started. I was sort of hoping I would be there in Dublin, which is why this is my wallpaper. But like, um, I guess I couldn't make it uh, probably for the best with all the airport chaos that's going on. Um, so today we're going to talk about if the news media is actually as polarized as um, our perceptions are, or are we like being conditioned to think that it is? So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a student at UMass Amherst. Socio-technical analysis is like a hobby of mine. Um, I've spoken at uh, PyCon Zede, which is in South Africa, Pi Ohio, et cetera, before. Um, so this talk is specifically about a field experiment because I guess we have to talk about a field experiment and what it taught me about news bias and um, polarization. So a quick survey of the room. I know not all of you have Zoom access, so I'll probably not be able to see this. But how many of you think in the room uh, that the news media today is like heavily polarized? You can like put your hands up so that everyone else in the room knows that you're thinking that. So they, they have like a fair sense of an idea of like just how many people think that it is fairly polarized. Um, so this is what like certain surveys say. Um, as you can see, from 1984 to 2017, uh, clearly we we have all been through something because we seem to think that um, the news media is not careful to separate fact from fiction or a fact from an opinion, um, and thus it's like heavily polarized. Um, it's the same in the UK newspapers. And at this particular point for like this analysis, I'm only going to like English speaking news newspapers just because of the uh, natural language models available to me, which are uh, mostly in English. So as you can see over here, um, this is another survey that was done in the UK. And um, the first thing that you would probably notice about this survey is that <laughs> It's super weird because like every newspaper, there's like a bunch of people who think it leans either left or right, which, which will probably make you think that people don't know what they're talking about, but that's what the survey says. Um, this is a chart that was created by All Slides and it was created off a survey and they basically ranked um, news organizations in the Anglosphere, which is like the English speaking um, prominently English speaking world of sorts into um, super left leaning, left leaning, uh, centrist, right leaning and like super right. Um, and I decided that I was going to try to see if uh, a natural language model could identify um, why all slides or like why there's like this perception of a particular political bias associated with a media house of sorts. Um, so this, the next question that we sort of come to is, why should we even study this phenomenon? Um, so I'm going to answer this in like three different parts. Um, so a question that I have always asked myself is, will the usage of natural language processing be as common as statistics one day? So if you've gone through like the history of how science has sort of evolved, we all know that statistics was not as commonly used as it is used today. Um, it was popularized in the 15th century, but now it's like, it's a super common tool. And it's used to describe phenomena you wouldn't have thought would be described in terms of statistics. For example, biology, astronomy, et cetera. Um, so we can use statistics because mathematics is the underlying language of science. But like, what is like the language of society? Um, the language of society is what we actually call language. And we all know that all of our laws, our judiciary, our social sciences, our culture, uh, all of these are based in certain languages. Um, I thought that natural language processing um, was a really good tool because it, it is like this bridge between uh, natural language and mathematics. So it was a good tool to quantify certain social phenomena. 
So maybe like in the future, natural language processing could be like the next statistics. Um, the second um, point is to quantify the biases in language. We all know that languages are biased because um, languages are basically um, an encapsulation of the concepts that, that are common to a particular society. Um, so we know that we've been using terminology that we've deemed inappropriate. For example, master slaves in electronics um, or the usage of the word blacklist. Um, while we know that this this is probably like a phenomena uh, that comes from back in the time when it was uh, okay to use words like that. It could be triggering for people um, who are who have been at the receiving end. Um, another point is social responsibility. Um, now this is a big one because we all know, and I think uh, I would say ninety percent of all of us would like sort of agree that. Uh, social media at this point um, is crazy. So social media sites across the world, they have hate speeches, they have calls for genocide, they have sexual harassment. And there's like a lot of policy scientists who look up like the various biases in our justice system's usage of language. And as most of the people in the world struggle with what is globally called media bias, I believe that as mathematics and statistics become commonplace measures, so will machine learning models. Um, so this work is an example of an intersection of a traditionally non-scientific field with computer science and mathematics, trying to quantify, measure, and identify non-mathematical phenomena in the language of mathematics. This is important because it could be um, the basis of scientific approaches that the next generation policymakers, voters, nonprofit organizations, even governments could use to make life-changing decisions for their for their citizens. Um, so, how polarized is the news media really, and how does one go about quantifying it? Um, to go ahead with this experiment, like for every experiment, you sort of have to scope what that experiment actually means, what you're going to try to do, uh, what is like the scope of that particular experiment, what data sets you're going to use. And this part of uh, this talk talks about like the scope of this particular experiment. Um, so uh, my definition for news media for like this particular experiment was established news organizations. So I was not including late night shows uh, or opinion shows, because though those are like, um, they're like sources of news for a lot of people, but they're not news shows. They're technically classified as entertainment shows. Um, online content on their website, some articles would include opinion piece, pieces, so I was not including those. Um, I was also not including social media content just because um, Everything that news media organizations put out on social media content may not be reporting and properly news. Um, so the, the aim of this particular experiment was to study the varying levels of polarization induced in a neural network by feeding it newspaper articles with manufactured sentiments. According to the All Slides Media Bias chart, for the level of paid people, on various aisles of the political spectrum have. So basically, my x would be um, a vector, um, and the vector would be derived from um, the news article itself. And y would be the credence, or like the faith that people sort of put into that particular um, news media organization on the basis of where they, the people, lie on the political spectrum. Um, some of the state-of-the-art or related work um, is mentioned here. So um, people have actually worked on related topics, but not on this particular specific um, experiment. Um, there was an online news media bias analysis uh, using an LDA and LP approach. Now this is like a super, super old experiment. 
that is when uh, the bag of words approach in NLP was uh, popular. So that's what they used. Um, but we do not know how it would perform um, with the models, um, the language models, and the um, neural networks that we have today. Um, there was another that was a political ideology detection using RNNs. But what this was doing was it, it used to go through like speeches of certain politicians and it would categorize that particular speech as being on one side of the political aisle. Um, there was one more called identification and analysis of media bias in news articles. Um, now this one, I would say, eventually led to like a good data set of sorts. Um, it was done by NewsBud, which is an aggregator. And it basically presents shared and different information on topics. Um, another one was quantifying perceived political biases of newspapers through a document classification technique. Now, this was document level. And uh, though I tried uh, starting my experiment with a document level analysis, um, the data required for uh, a proper document level analysis, I was not able to um, scrape to in that given amount of time. Um, there was another one called Media Bias, the Social Sciences and NLP, automating frame analysis to identify bias by word choice and labeling. Um, this one depended only on word choice biases, um, and it basically would work for like a very specific set of articles in the sense that if there were like an incident that sort of took place and there was like one side who was calling like the aggressors in the incident terrorists and there were like other uh, people on the other side who were calling them freedom fighters. So it would be like very specific and that was not something that I was looking for. Um, another one is detecting media bias in news articles using Gaussian bias distributions. Uh, this required heavily annotated data, which I didn't have. Um, which is why I eventually went forward with this approach. Um, I used a variety of data sets just to make sure. Um, so the data sets I used were the COVID, uh, the COVID alien data set. This was UK and US media. Um, Topic-based 200K news headlines from the year 2012 to 2018 by Kaggle. Um, NELA's 2017 news data set. All the news by Kaggle, uh, EMNLP based data set. Um, I also used a few fake news data set, which was compiled using news headlines from the spoof, an online journal that publishes fake news or uh, satire or jokes. Um, I'll tell you later why I use that. Um, so the specifications of this particular experiment um, were whether was it going to use document encoding or sentence encoding? So as I mentioned before, um, the data for required to do like a document level analysis was not something that I had on hand, which is why I decided to go for sentence encoding. Um, I went to a couple of data sets, uh, went to a couple of encoding techniques and um, there weren't like any patterns that were sort of emerging, which is why uh, I decided to ask myself this question. It was, is a headline a good representation of bias? Um, and the answer surprisingly was yes. Um, and you'll actually be like super surprised to discover this. So question time, um, do these next sentences show you any level of biases? Um, these are two headlines. They're taken from actually the same news media organization, but they've been uh, they've been published for like two different editions of that same news media organization. So as you can see, um, the first one says Bernie Sanders scores victories for years via legislative side doors, and the second one says via legislative side doors Bernie Sanders won modest victories. So you would think. If you were the person reading the second sentence, you would think, okay, it's probably not such a big deal. Um, he scored like a modest victory. And the first one would make you think that um, there has been some sort of progress happening there. And they're from the same news organizations. In fact, um, 
on an anecdotal basis i've seen headlines that are like super misleading uh misleading to the extent that when you go to the article and eventually read it you're like this doesn't correspond to the um headline at all so i would say that headlines are a good measure of bias they are like um very useful when the news media organization wants to elicit like a certain response from you without compromising on their credibility as a news media organization so like the article is super super accurate or accurate to like a fair degree but the headline is a little off um so there were other problems to address um some of the problems were is the sentiment evoked from a headline enough to indicate some bias yes i would say yes um can a headline be considered a review of the state of affairs maybe if you would think of it that way um can a neural network be polarized if it were to learn from the perspective of a biased news consumer um i would say yes does the category of news a biased consumer or neural network trust completely affect their perception when it comes to fake news um so the last point is why i included like a fake news data set because i wanted to see if um uh, there were people on there were people consuming news from organization on on like one side of the political aisle would that affect like how vulnerable they were to uh, actual fake news um so the methodology that i basically used for this experiment the first is sentiment classification and the second one um to confirm the vulnerability vulnerability was binary classification in the detection of fake news um so my pipeline for the sentiment analysis looked a little like this on the top you can see um all the different data sets that i used um i fed all of the um uh, headlines from all of these data sets and news organizations to pre-trained sentiment models so there are pre-trained natural language models based on twitter and yelp so the yelp models are based on yelp reviews they have um the yelp ratings to like sort of base of their learning from and for twitter um there's a roberta model that basically does sentiment analysis so what happens when you feed in um a sentence into these sentiment models you get like a vector at the end Uh, which is an encapsulation of what the model has learned through its task of uh, sentiment analysis on Yelp or Twitter data. Um, when I had the vectors and I had um, a score for that particular news organization, so as you can see on the right side of my screen, you can see there's an example of a headline and a score. so the headline would be the actual headline and the score would be a score given to the news media organization based on where it lied on the political aisle um and by by creating like a vector using a pre-trained um sentiment model we were adding like pre-learned sentiment context to the these embeddings um then i fed it into um a variety of uh, neural networks um i I had CNNs, I had LSTMs, GRUs, etc. Um and for the fake news detection, again, we have um the data sets on the top. Um we have the sediment embedders. After that and um I used like uh a lesser number of models for this one because this was binary classification. Um So I used the CNN and LSTM and GRU. Um, so these are some of the results. I'm not sure if you can see them as well as I can. Um, as you can see, um, there there's like hardly any data set that actually polarized um, a neural network that actually led to like some sort of good results. 
and you can see how it sort of varies according to the data set um emnlp was like i would say induced like the most most polarization like the neural network learned something um and uh, if you look at like the x axis on this particular chart you can see that there are certain um, data sets that are appended with trump um which is basically like it was a it was a subset of the data set like um all news trump is like the subset of the data set all news but it was um like i kept only the headlines that mentioned trump specifically just to see if um there was any sort of topical bias that was sort of induced um so my conclusions from like this experiment were that um the only data set that polarizes a neural network at least in this context in this particular design and in this scope was the emnlp um the emnlp is a data set that is not scored on the basis of the source of the news but rather has been hand annotated by annotators to detect the stanzas left right or center now you'll be surprised to know that when the annotators detected the stanzas of um the headlines in emnlp as left right or center there is no correlation between their stance as left right and center as hand annotated and between the all sides media bias chart which gives which would have given me like a different score based on where it sort of lay on the political spectrum um this means that while some level of polarization exists there is no polarization on the basis of the perceived bias as calculated by all sides in their surveys some news articles do take ideologically polarizing stance in their articles but this is not true with respect to most of the articles um secondly hand annotated um articles are the best data set to conduct news media by studies as the neural networks seem to learn best from the features learned by these annotated data sets for the us covid data set uh, is more polarized than the uk covid data set over the nala 2017 data set and the all the news data set a filter version of the data set that included the keyword trump polarized the neural network more than the non filtered version this points to the possibility that topical bias may exist in these publications and needs to be examined um so for this fake news um as i said i conducted two experiments the other one was the fake news vulnerability analysis um that gave some interesting results as well um all the categories for all the data sets are pretty much robust and not vulnerable to fake news to a great degree um the cnn and the by gru models gave like around 100% accuracy for like all the cases by listm showed some variations here for like the us covid uk covid news data set when we used uh, yelp embeddings the vulnerability decreased for centrist news agencies an opposite trend was observed for us covid news um the centrist news agency reporting had a lower accuracy when detecting fake news this could basically be because of the way yelp and twitter roberta models learned features or it could be because of the fake news that was sourced from the website this proof which was like super us centric this is an interesting trend where the nela 2017 data set when filtered on the keyword term developed some level of vulnerability towards fake news especially when it came to like the extreme left leaning news publications um so some of the observations um svms actually perform better clustering with respect to the categories than neural networks however the maximum does not cross 67% the most significant conclusion from this work is that though there is a perceived bias when it comes to news agencies when looked at from a neural network standpoint it is negligible mainstream news agencies are not able to polarize a neural network with inherent biases in their headlines there may be topical biases that need to be examined by using an entity linking and bias calculation approach 
most mainstream news agencies do not make the consumer vulnerable to believing fake news um this study needs to be conducted with data from popular so- social media news groups or popular tv shows that masquerade as news but may technically not be so it's safe to conclude that perceived bias that stems from social media polarization is being extended to news media when their contribution to polarization may actually be minimal um so the significance of this work is to be able to transform like a social problem into like a technical one and using neural networks and machine learning techniques to try to gain some insights hopefully using these techniques to find deeper trends will become mainstream and help policy makers and general citizens um, approach news media bias in a better light um so this is some of the future work that i hope to do and we'll probably give like a talk in person maybe like next year um thanks so much um i'm now open for like questions thank you roma Uh, do we have any remote questions? Mm, no. Anybody in the audience here have a question? If you do, please come up to the mic. I guess we don't. Oromal, thank you very much for the talk. Thanks so much. <laughs>